Good morning and a very Merry Christmas to you all. Let me welcome you warmly to our online service for Christmas Day here at Shettleston New. Christmas this year has been very different for all of us. Most of the changes I'm sure we're not very keen on. Perhaps a few of you are appreciating one or two things, the chance to worship Jesus in your jammies this morning maybe, or keep half an eye on the turkey while you're participating in the service. But we have, despite these differences, tried to keep some of the, the usual traditions, and that includes lighting the Christ candle at the centre of the Advent wreath um, during the watch night service. And we're going to begin this morning by carrying on where we left off last night, encouraging one another to worship Jesus in the words of that wonderful carol, O come all ye faithful.
Let's talk to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, that carol encourages all who have faith in your Son to come full of praise, worshipping him and greeting him on this joyous morning. And so we gather across the internet this morning, eager to hear what you have to say to us through your word, and wanting to respond with praise and worship, inspired by your spirit. And so we come to say thank you, thank you for the birth of Jesus. Now thank you for all that he has done for us. Amen. Normally, our knitted nativity set would be going out and about, visiting lots of different families within the congregation at this time of year. Now, obviously, this year that's not been possible, but Douglas has still been taking the nativity set out on its travels and he's been uh, recording some photographs of all the things they've been up to. They're all up on the uh, church Facebook page. If you've not seen them, it's well worth a look. Um, but we're going to use a few of those photos just now to help us tell the nativity story. A little over 2,000 years ago, in the town of Nazareth in the land of Galilee, there lived a girl called Mary, and she was engaged to be married to a carpenter called Joseph. But one day, Mary got a big surprise. An angel appeared and talked to her. This angel told her that she had been chosen by God to have a very special baby. This baby would be God's son. He would be God's chosen king and his kingdom would never end. Mary was a bit surprised by all this, but she told the angel, I am the Lord's servant, and she was ready to obey what God was asking of her. Now Joseph, well, he was a bit shocked to discover that Mary was pregnant. They hadn't got married yet. He was wondering what to do, but then he had a dream one night. An angel came and talked to him and reassured him. The baby that would be born was indeed a special gift from God and he was to be called Jesus because that name means saviour and so Joseph was reassured and along with Mary he started to make plans for the arrival of this baby but then they had some very surprising news the Roman emperor had decided that he wanted to know the names of everyone who lived in the Roman Empire he wanted to do that so he could make sure they were all paying their taxes. But for Joseph and Mary, this was a big problem because Joseph originally came from the town of Bethlehem, a long way to the south, and he would have to go back there to register. And so even though Mary was expecting to have her baby very soon, Mary and Joseph had to set off on a long and difficult journey down to Bethlehem. It probably took them the best part of a week to get there. But when they arrived, they had another problem. Everywhere was full. Every place they tried to stay, there was no room. Eventually, they found one innkeeper who told them that although he didn't have any room, he did have a stable out the back and Mary could go there to have her baby. Mary made herself as comfortable as she could in that stable. And in the night, baby Jesus was born. And without having a crib, Mary had to lay him in a manger, an animal's feeding trough, with hay for some bedding. The animals in the stable were probably surprised by these visitors, these new arrivals. But there would be other visitors to the stable that night as well. Out in the fields near Bethlehem, there were some shepherds who were watching their flocks. And suddenly an angel appeared to them and spoke to them. 
the shepherds got a huge shock. But the angel reassured them, saying, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in Bethlehem, a saviour has been born. He's the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then the sky lit up with lots of other angels, all singing to God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Then the angels went away and the shepherds said to one another, let's go down to Bethlehem and see, see this thing that the angels have told us about. So they hurried down there and they found baby Jesus lying in the manger, just as the angels had said. And the shepherds went through the streets, praising God for all that they had seen and heard. Let's celebrate the birth of Jesus as we sing. Away in a manger. Now, as well as the shepherds and the angels, there were some other people that came to worship baby Jesus. And we're going to hear all about them just now as we watch a video from the Lumo Project that uses the words from chapter two of Matthew's Gospel. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler 
who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. These wise men brought with them gifts that revealed something of Jesus' mission and his true identity. Gold was a gift fit for a king, and Jesus, of course, is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Frankincense was used by priests as part of their worship in the temples of symbolised holiness, and Jesus is our great high priest. He is the one who brings the people to God. Myrrh was a spice that was used for preparing bodies for burial. It points us towards Jesus' death on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins. And so there's a, a great significance to all three of these gifts. But for baby Jesus lying there in the manger, I suspect he was probably quite, well, he maybe appreciated the shininess and some of the aroma, but I guess he was probably quite confused by all these strange gifts. And I have to say, I've got a bit of sympathy uh, with him because normally at our Christmas Day service, all our children bring some of the toys that they've been unwrapping. And there's always one or two uh, complicated electronic ones with lots of flashing lights and buttons and characters I've never heard of that just end up leaving me completely confused and befuddled. But we can't share in uh, the joy that our children have of, of all these toys uh, this year. We can't share as a congregation. So instead, we're going to watch uh, a video from Forest Hills Church, and it does at least feature some unwrapping. <laughs> I'm alive! I'm alive! Yeah? Yeah! Oh, yeah! Uh, hey, Christine! You're here too! I love you! I know! Dad! What's happening? Honey, the power works! It's coming, it goes on and off! Whatever we want! <laughs> We've got clean water! Oh, that's great! Look at that! Ooh! I bet I know what this does! Rain down the glorious water! Ha! <laughs> Oh, what do we got here, guys? Food. Mm, I love food. What? A, a food food? Do you not have work? This is awesome. Look, look at here. These? The what? Dad, be careful. Oh, I have a car. Did you guys see this? Yeah, you have a car. A car. <laughs> and don't forget your coffee. You're the best. <laughs> that video was actually made a few years ago, um, long before anyone had any idea of how we might have to celebrate this Christmas. But I think the basic message still holds very true, even in the middle of a COVID Christmas, that we've been blessed in so many ways. We just need to stop, to pause, to appreciate them, and remember to give thanks. As the old song goes, uh, count your blessings, name them one by one. 
and then you'll be amazed at what the Lord has done. But let's remember also, the greatest gift of all that the Lord has given us is the gift of himself. He came down to earth from heaven, taking on all the limitations of being a human being, even starting out life in an animal's feeding tray. But he came to teach us, to lead us, to be our king, to give us the direction that we need. And he came to bring us back to God as our great high priest. And he came to be the sacrifice that would make all that possible. But then he rose again, showing us that the way to heaven was open, that eternal life was there for all who chose to follow him. And so Jesus showed the truth of those very familiar words from the start of John's gospel, that he is the light shining in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome him. We're going to need that light as we go into the year ahead. So let's keep letting the light of Christ into our lives as we turn our thoughts to him, as we come to him with our prayers and as we let his word guide our path, reminding us of just how much he loves us. So let's turn to Jesus just now in prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for that promise that you are the light shining in the darkness, the light of the world and the darkness will never overcome you. Lord, we need your light to guide us, sustain us in these weeks and months ahead. Help us to let your light into our lives as we turn to your word and as we turn to you in prayer. And Lord, we pray that the light would shine out from us as well that we could offer your light to others. We pray for all who need your light, especially today. Those who are isolated, those who are missing loved ones, those for whom this time of year is particularly difficult, those who feel like they have no hope. Lord, shine your light into their lives. Help us to play our part in that we pray and keep us grateful for all the many blessings that you give us. Thank you Jesus. Amen. In a moment we're going to sing our final carol, one that encourages us to join with the angel chorus worshipping God. Hark the herald angels sing. Just before we do I'd like to wish you all a peaceful and a healthy Christmas and let's hope it won't be too long before we're all back worshipping with one another once again. Let's sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the peace of Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this Christmas and always. Amen.